intercropping, a farming practice that involves growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field. In Uganda, this practice is often seen with bananas intercropped with coffee, maize or millet, with soya beans, cocoa with trees and plantain with legumes. Many farmers today have adopted intercropping as an effective cultivation method to outcompete weeds, provide shed, boost yields and reduce costs of production. But what does it take to effectively manage an intercrop? Tonight on Seeds of Gold, intercropping mangoes with passion fruits to maximize profit. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. The mango will give, start giving you fruits at uh, three years. So if you are cultivating the mango for all, those, for all that period, you know, with our uh, fluctuating prices in the market, so when you get to the market, they tell you now we are buying this, the other time we are buying this, so you planted with a target. So at some point you get to the market and you're disappointed. So uh, what I decided, if I put the passion fruit, like now here, if I put the passion fruit, it will give me fruits up to two years. Mukasa Mohabuya cultivates a 50-acre piece of land on which he grows various crops from pineapples, jinga, bananas, vegetables and fruit trees. But one particular investment caught our attention, the integration of passion fruits with mangoes. His journey, however, starts somewhere else, a completely different crop idea. Actually, when I was starting farming, I visited the farm in uh, 2000, 2017, around there. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He has uh, around 2,500 acres in Mayuge. He was doing uh, sugarcane, academia, and other things. But now he's doing has avocado. So uh, when I looked at his farm, uh, he told me about has avocado, the outcomes, and everything. Uh, that's why I was inspired to go into farming. So when I came here, I bought, at first I bought 100 acres. Then I've been adding on more land. But with 100 acres, I cleared 50 acres to plant has avocado. It was my uh, goal by then. So when I invited him to come and inspect the land that I, what I had done, uh, he told me you cannot do has avocado without water. And by then I hadn't uh, got a source of water to do irrigation. So uh, since I had cleared the land, I had nothing to do with it. So I had to think of something which I can plant there and doesn't need irrigation uh, in the initial stage. So, uh, he again advised me, he said, you can put mangoes as you get water and clear, clear another land where you can put a has avocado. So I bought uh, KNT, KET, uh, Takataka, the Zingoi, I got it from Kenya. Then I mixed it up. So after planting all these 50 acres of uh, mangoes, and uh, you know you have to cultivate. So that's why I got uh, that concept of uh, uh, intercropping. If you have sit down there, I'm intercropping with a lot of things. So, particularly this side, I want to make around five acres of passion fruit, but intercropped in mangoes. Inspired by a friend's investment into farming, pushed by the COVID situation, Mukasa's vision to functionally use his land became clear. While targeting the mangoes as his main fruit crop, he devised means to run the farm amidst the limitations of fans. Initially, before the COVID period, I was able to do it because my business was doing good, so I was doing it. So now when uh, the income stopped, so uh, I started thinking of utilizing the land between the mangoes because the, from the mango to another mango, there's a, almost uh, 30 feet uh, around between there. And the mango is not using all, those, uh, all that space at the time when it is growing. So I decided to uh, use that land so that I can get some money to run me, uh, to run the mango and, and the farm without adding more costs. Yes, so that's why I intercropped. The mango will give, start giving you fruits at three years. So if you are cultivating the mango for all, those, for all that period, you know, with our uh, fluctuating prices in the market, so when you get to the market, they tell you now we are buying this, the other time we are buying this, so you planted with a target. So at some point you get to the market and you're disappointed. So uh, what I decided, 
if I put the passion fruit, like now here, if I put the passion fruit, it will give me fruits up to two years. In an effort to ensure the trees produce a healthy fruitful yield, a number of factors need to be considered right from the choice of seedling. Mukasa opts for disease resistant varieties. Actually, I started with uh, those grafted mangoes. I bought, I bought them uh, around, around 2,500 to 3,000. Around there. I don't remember the figures very well, but I remember the one I got from Kenya. Uh, I bought, I bought uh, around 1,500 uh, trees at uh, 5,000 at Ngoi. I think I paid around 10 million plus for those that I got from Kenya. But those ones I, I got locally, uh, I bought them at around 7 million, around that, something like that. And uh, as time go, went on, uh, because I was not giving much attention to the farm, so uh, some of them died. And when they died, uh, I was lucky that uh, the district, uh, those agricultural officers, so he came around because they were told about the big farm that has been, had been started up in the village. So when he came around, uh, they, saw, uh, they saw the mangoes that I had planted and those that had died. And the government supported me with uh, 2,000 2, trees on top of what I had. So uh, that's how initially how I started with the mangoes. Then the passion fruits, um, I got them from uh, Namlongi because I wanted the, the grafted one because here I'm focusing more on uh, organic farming. And organic farming, one, uh, we want to do away with the diseases so we prevent better than curing because uh, the, the, the organic pesticides, some, sometimes their reaction is slow. Yes, so uh, and at some point you might find that you have to remove the whole, the whole, the whole plant. So uh, I went to Namurongi, I bought the grafted ones. Initially I had bought the, the, the normal ones that are not grafted. So I bought, I planted almost four types. I wanted the, the Kawanda which is not grafted, then the Kawanda which is grafted, the Kamasaka which I've planted here, which is uh, which is not grafted, and the kamasaka, which is grafted. Yes. So the, the seed uh, for kawanda it goes around 1,800, 1,500. The grafted one, the one which is not grafted, goes around 1,800, 1,000, 1, or sometimes sometimes I got it at uh, 800, around there. Those from the beds. Still to come, the best intercropping practices to maximize yields. With the right crop combination, spacing, treatment and plant management, intercropping can prove to be very beneficial as opposed to a monocropped system. In some cases, it has even been seen to improve yields like the cases of legumes fixing nitrogen and other nutrients in the soil. This means one needs to pay close attention to the needs of each crop individually even though they are intercropped. This will reduce the risk of damage loss to either one of the crops. This will be the backbone of maintaining an intercropped garden. Uh, in terms of maintenance, you know, for the, like for the passion now, you have to, to spray it weekly. But here, uh, what we do, the rabbit urine is helping us and the droppings in terms of uh, fertilizers. So we, we, we use more of, uh, uh, of the rabbit urine than buying uh, uh, those uh, medicines they use for spraying. So I, I use more of the rabbit urine. So uh, in that sense, it's not costing me a lot since I'm, uh, my main crop is the, is the mango. So we, I spray both. It helps me that, like I use one stone to heat two of them. If I'm spraying, I also spray the mangoes and the passion fruit at the same time. Initially, we planted the, uh, the plant itself. Uh, then uh, we bought the poles. We bought the poles where it will be, uh, to support uh, the outer structure where it's going to fruit from. 
then we bought uh, the, uh, the, those wires. There is the, the metal one and there is the gauze, which you use. So, so some people use the fishnet. So we, bought, we didn't use the fishnet because it was expensive. So we bought the wires and did it ourselves. So we did it ourselves. Uh, th those are the materials that, that you require to set up that structure up. Because we have, we, we have a space of uh, 30 feet from the mango to the mango. Eh? So what we did, uh, the requirement for uh, that stand for the passion fruit is uh, 8 by 8. Some do 8 by 8, others do 8 by 10. Normally they say 8 by 8 on the Kaloko one, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Kawanda one. Then uh, the local one you do 8 by 8. But me I did uh, 8 by 8 all over because I had enough trees, I had, I had enough poles. So what we did, uh, we measured from the mango to the mango, then we used that space in between. Here as you can see, this is the line with mangoes. So this is the ma from there, this is the line for mangoes, and this is the passion fruit. So the passion fruit which is here, we put it the other side, so it grows within here. But if it, if it is too congested here, we can now direct it to this area. That's why we left this one open. So that if it is too congested there, now we direct it to this area, which is still between the mango and the mango. So we'll put it maybe around here and around here to leave uh, an empty space for the mango to get uh, sunshine. When I wake up every morning, uh, because I'm normally at the farm from Wednesday, from Wednesday, I come Wednesday evening. So I'm here on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then I go back to town on Sunday evening. So these days that I'm at the farm, I make sure that at least I see, uh, I'm, I'm part of all the activities on the farm. Many on the passion fruit, I, I do it myself. So in the morning when I wake up, I go through uh, one, those ones that are still going up, will move the branches so that it can go and it reaches the, 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 the other structure. And those ones that are already there, the half roots, we, we plow by removing the old, uh, the old flowers, the old, sorry, the old leaves, so that uh, we can create more light and it can give us more fruits. Running this farm is not a walk through the park. Mukasa does face some challenges as he states. I'm not so old in farming. I started the farm in 2018 and uh, the passion fruit I started them this year in uh, February. But the challenge that I faced at the farm is the, the labor. Uh, the youth don't want to work. They're saying no, they say they don't have employment and when you call the farm to work, they don't want. So you find yourself uh, sometimes the things are in the bush, the money is there, but there are no people to come and work and, and they clear them out. Also one time we faced uh, a challenge uh, in the drought, the, in the dry spell. It was too hot and uh, we didn't have uh, water for irrigation. So um, uh, in, dry, in, in Dubai, yeah, there's, there's what they are using, it is called solid drain. Uh, yes, so I bought it and I applied it uh, uh, on, on, the, on the passion uh, fruits. When we go there, I'll show you. What it does, when, they, when you put it around the, uh, around the crop, when the rain comes, or when you're, when, you're, when you're doing irrigation, when you irrigate, those particles, they swallow the water. So when they swallow the water, they store the water. So during the dry spell, they'll be releasing that water slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. It, the, the water, when they have swollen the water, it can take them two to three months releasing that water. And it is hard in Uganda to spend two months without even a single rain. So when, they, when the rain comes, it, is, it, it absorbs the water. Then it starts releasing it slowly by slowly in the dry spell. So that's what I used. What does the future for Mukasa's investment look like? My vision for uh, intercropping is um, uh, uh, now that I have uh, a crop, uh, like a tree, this is my main crop, um, when you're doing the calculations, there is, uh, when this, uh, the first year, the, 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 the mango can give you around uh, 50 to 100 fruits. So 50 to 100 fruits in one season. So uh, at the, the next season, 
it might also give you the same because the, as it grows big, then the number of fruits also increases. So um, if I sell uh, uh, if I sell each mango at uh, maybe uh, 500 shillings, so for 100 uh, for 100 uh, fruits, I'll have maybe 100. So time was two because there are two seasons. That is 200 from each tree. So say I think now I have around 6,000 trees in the 50 acres. So you can multiply and see. But uh, uh, that cost will go on increasing year by year because each year the, 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 the mango goes big. It also gives you more fruits. So it will be increasing year by year. But uh, uh, when I sat down, uh, I thought of bringing that mango up to that stage. It takes, a, it takes a lot of money to take it up to that stage. And that's why most farmers also feel uh, demoralized when someone comes and gives you a price that is less than even your calculation because of what you've put in, what were your calculations. So sometimes farmers are demoralized with the prices. So um, when I looked at that and I looked at uh, the space in between there, I think about, uh, then I thought about intercropping so that I plant things that can give me day-to-day -day income that can be used to run the farm, also to run the mangoes, to maintain them. Also when it gets at that time of selling, I don't feel so much pinched because I at least I've uh, got some, something out of, uh, out, uh, some things on the way. Like, like now I'm planting passion fruits, they will take me almost two years. For, for two years I'll be, I'll be getting the fruits, I'll be selling at least per week. So this money I can use it, uh, I, I use this money to, uh, to pay labor, to pay um, the, the medicine that we are using in the farm, to pay, to pay any other cost that is involved in bringing up the mango, up the time it's going to give me the fruits. So uh, my vision for intercropping was, was to reduce the cost of uh, maintaining the main crop, which I expect to get profit from. Passion fruits in particular are associated with a high maintenance need while the mango trees need space to branch well. Solomon, an agronomist, recommends these practices to balance both crops if you are to have a profitable outcome. While the mangoes are still young, you can comfortably intercrop them with other crops like passion fruits, if you're looking at fruits. But what is more important uh, to appreciate is uh, every, each, each and every crop that you're going to put in an intercrop uh, must be optimized for spacing. If you look at mangoes, uh, where an optimum spacing is about 8 by 8 meters, uh, passion fruits with a spacing of about uh, 5 by 7 feet, you can ably put these two crops together. What, however, what is very important is each of them must receive its due care and all management aspects should be specific to each of the crops. If you look at mangoes, uh, with the mango requirements of, of nutrients in soil, man mangoes require of course uh, a deep, uh, well fertile and well drained soils, but the application of uh, fertilizers in soil, uh, the recommended uh, application of fertilizers, for example if they're just establish, establishing uh, these mangoes, uh, is to apply organic manure at least once uh, in a year. And if you look at passion fruits, both uh, mangoes and passion fruits are heavy feeders. Th that means each of them requires optimum nutrition. So if you are able to, uh, to give your mangoes at least uh, fertilizer, organic fertilizer, uh, organic, in terms of organic manure, once every year, then th the passion fruits also must receive uh, their due portion of the nutrients. If you're planting uh, passion fruits, for example, you're able to plant passion fruit with a, either a mixture of organic matter and uh, the diammonium phosphate, which we commonly call uh, DAP. But also later in the season, the application of such fertilizers as NPK are very critical. Now, interestingly, you don't have to, ha to apply a lot of nitrogenous fertilizers with the mangoes because that, that won't do very well for them. So looking at the due care, uh, the shortest cycle crop in an intercrop of uh, both mangoes and passion fruit is going to be the passion fruit. The passion fruit will be out of the garden uh, in about what, two, ab about two years. One of the benefits of intercropping is the ease with which one can practice biodiversity as an effective tool of cost cutting. This is an essential aspect of farming in a corona-constrained situation today. 
The Hunger Project Uganda has for this reason used this approach to support smallholder farmers to improve yield production. This is Musisi James's story. Nebendiro. <laughs> Kuvanga, tewe wala nyo kumulila zine sigo we nongo semu. Kuwa zuza achisira busira. Ni tumeziza kukusome sarantu. Hira na ukuteka u uh, enimirezo kuzaru kusensi gezo. Ukula vikanga bulimu mtu wachiri ajifuna makage. Ukusoburo kuyambo kuma utonde wensi. Atina ukubila wana avana na vazi kuma vilenga masanga wensi gezo. Nolwecho tugenze tusome sarantu. Atene nsigezo kuzime rusa wano, ukuzaza, mburi omuwa venga soro kuzifuna. Right. Mtende ugusoka, mwegu kuwe danti, tuina uh, enimiro, mwetongeleza kubonji kwe nsigezo. Abantu bafe, nivajia nivazifuna wano, nabu nivagenda, nivazisimba. Mtu chitu ya ambinyo kubange cha mazima, abantu vazitu tira vachikoze. Uh, Mtende ugusoka, Je misomo jitu wa somo seza. E misomo ejigeza kukula vanti na vo. Basa mungkola. No kukumeze nsigu zitu wa tuwa wade. Kukula vikanti wa zaza. Ati no kukungiro kuzikuma. Naba zitirika. Mteli rogo kusatu. Gwe kukula vanti. Ba ngojeko kumeru sensigo. Ati wa simbe miti. Miti nge mituwa. Miti nge migavu. Kuwange jina juji yamba ko, mkuu yamba kukuma, kukutonde kwa nsi, sakono ukulembeka ama ziga mkoka. Na guga yamba ko nyo, mbulimi obongo, no kuwango vosu vuru ukula vile chili mecho mbuli chisera, mbuli hude. Aba ntutuba sumbe saa, ukusimbe miti ejikula amangu. Ukusimbe miti ejikula amangu. Tulina, tulina shed net, wawo tu merusi za insige zenja ulo. Ate ejikula amangu. Tuba kubiri zo kusimba katugeze mituba Kwa nga mtuba gumuku mitigi osuburo kutema ako Arubwa nyumaru umuwa katine gudamu negusi neguloka Kwa nga utema kama tabi asa tu Nauga fumbisa ate nchia neguzala matabi nga mkaga Tumeruse mitinga kariandra Kariandra yamba ko nyo Mkulisa evikole mbuzi zibilia Wamune ente Katia wabutibu wabote mieko Ate nauga nga wabufumbisa Kwa nga mtuba igiriza okola sigiri uh, ulijo utula wakano ukoli lao kubanga natuwe ya misetakali eviswa nizo kutabula moru mbunguo va obu kutabu emiti nevi nituwe vila lanti chiru vila wacha fe chakula lanti wachiri buli memba wapa buli chitundu wetu koli la emili mja kubaje tutuso uweleza wa fe batula venga buli muntu ayaya nilo kusimba ensigeza fe zinansi Echo, utusimbi ya chinyusi. Kituwa gala wachili bulimu, tubulimu, tubulimu, tubulimu. Tukubanga tuina obu chike yomu vialo. Obu tiyamba kukola vye tuko lawano. Tivye tuko lawano, chino chifana nye chinene, na echi tulage chifana nye chitono, ate chili mu vialo. Norecho, awe wali tagiti ya fenti. Wachili bulimu, mchitundu cha fwemwe tuweleza, avelenga yega seku nkola, yyo kulime vintu yyo buwangazi. Oloku mobu tonde wensi, Ati nuru kubira nti habana bafe, habana jivujana haba zikuru, bali sanga webi nitu yevi ni.